to the program. Uh, Dr. Hassan Mahmoud joins me here. He's the director of Monetary Policy Department at the Central Bank of Nigeria. Dr. Mahmoud, good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank now, you for me. you're welcome. Let's dive straight in. And um, I will start with a question around. I know that the FX Bank, you and your colleagues must have seen what uh, uh, has been in the media since yesterday about JP Morgan's um, right of estimates that FX reserves have 3.7 billion US dollars. So I want us to start on that premise. Is that true? How have we gotten there? Because even on your website, it's over 30 billion dollars that is in FX. But I also looked at your financial statements last week. Uh, you have some uh, uh, FX forwards. You also have um, um, from JP uh, from. Goldman Sachs as well as that's about $7.5 billion and all of that. So I, w I would like an explanation for that because many Nigerians are really agitated. Agitated is even a soft word. Are very angry right now how we got there. So let's start from that. Thank you very much. Uh, we also read the JP Morgan uh, numbers um, in-house. We didn't uh, panic over that. Uh, that's not the first time we're seeing uh, uh, people, institutions, reeling out numbers, you know, they must have their intention for doing that, uh, whether to rouse market sentiment, whether to mislead the public. Uh, but Central Bank has, as much as possible, tried to be transparent. Uh, like you mentioned, we released our financial statements for how many years on the, on the public domain, you are saying that. What I would say about those numbers is it's just funny in the sense that, number one, uh, reserves, like any account balance, is a flow. There are changes that go on within it uh, at any particular time. Number two, even if you have outstanding liabilities, you don't mark the outstanding liabilities to market on a day and say this is your net balance. I can have 20 million in my account but I'm owing someone maybe 13 million. That is supposed to be paid in 2027. You can't come in 2023 and say, oh, if I remove that 13 million, your money is 7 million, you're having 7 million. I'm not having 7 million, I'm having 20 million. Because before I took a facility of 13 million, I know in the next three years, I'll get 17 million so I can pay you back. But for you to come and tell me that, no, your balance is 7 million, and you can't pay back in three years. It's, it's just kind of, you know, putting it out of, out of context. Um, yes, there are liabilities, you know, or encumbrances to the reserve, which is, which is natural, which is, uh, which is normal. Uh, the central bank builds the reserve to defend the Naira in terms of the, the value of the Naira to other currencies. So that, th those reserves close to 80% of it is central bank's funds. When the federal government or the oil sector, oil uh, export receipts come to Nigeria, it comes through the central bank. The central bank monetizes that to Naira, and the federal government spends the Naira in the implementation of its budget. So the, that dollar component sits with the central bank. That, the purpose of that dollar conference, one, is to build the confidence of the international community in the capability of central bank to meet its trade commitments. So you will see measurements around uh, what uh, months of import, whether goods and services or goods only, can your reserve covers. That gives some confidence to investors that are trading with Nigerian investors in terms of import and export. Number two, in the event that, for example, that we're having a float managed exchange rate regime, in the event that the, the, the prices or the value of your currency is significantly depreciating or appreciating or whatever direction it is going, the central bank has the firepower to intervene in the market such that you bring the price to your expected or optimal calculated equilibrium, uh, optimal, uh, equilibrium uh, rate. So that is what the reserve is meant for. Reserve is not meant for just trading or whatever. In the event that there are also shortfalls in the build-up of those reserves, you can take a swap, you can do all other engagement that is legally allowed by the CBN Act over the short period of time. The, 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 the exchange rates, it's, as we've mentioned several times, are also part of the tools to address price stability, including leading to inflation and, and all that. So it is, it is a, a tool that we can comfortably 
you know, used to one, build investors' confidence in the, in the Nigerian economy, also builds the uh, sovereign confidence in terms of our exposures to multilaterals and all that central federal government is owing, it's supposed to pay um, sub services debt and all that. So people do all those calculations and said, okay, for example, we have some government loans that are for 10 years, over a particular 10 years period, and there is, there is um, annual service uh, charges that you're supposed to pay for interest, that you're supposed to pay for those, amortize those loans. If you come today and sum up the entire facility, maybe 20 billion, and you say, okay, federal government is owing 20 billion for the last 10 years, so if you move that 20 billion from 33 billion, you have only 3 billion to service debt. That is wrong, because there are going to be inflows. Federal government is going to earn some money. So uh, it's the, 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 I don't know how they did their calculation. I don't have any information about that. But we also saw those numbers that, that, that came out. Uh, Central Bank doesn't want to be just responding to everything that comes. Everything go, we'll go to the public. Oh, no, this is a lie. Do you think that not responding could also worsen the matter? Well, those that need and, to and know. And people will take that. You see, the, the those that need to know. The gullible public mm. may be taken, you know, by surprise, shock. Um, the real investors know the numbers. The real investors, the top J high net worth investors, mm. know the numbers. Uh, to be sincere with you, but J.P. Morgan is yes. not a, is not a is is, is not but a small boy. But who said boy. it in J.P. Morgan? Is it the CEO of J.P. Morgan? J.P. Morgan is a leading. Yeah, investment it's just like firm. me. Uh, somebody, I yeah, just speak something mm -hmm. now and said Hassan Mahmoud said, and he said, "Oh, Central Bank of Nigeria said." People will take you seriously. You know, but that those are two different things, and it depends on the context of where that was also said. So we 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 have the numbers there. The Central Bank reserves are on our bank net. Yes, it is the figure you see today may not be exactly to the last decimal point, but you have that picture that you are seeing there. We have 33 billion, there's IMF facility there, the, the, uh, the RSI that we got, the SDR mm -hmm. is also there. You have other, uh, the JP Morgan numbers that you mentioned, they are all there, but we have forward but what we're saying is that you don't mark them to market on day one or any particular day. Yes, it's, it's, it's an assessment period that, okay, in the event of a crisis, like a stress test, it's like taking a stress test results as actual. Stress test results are supposed to give you worst case scenario. And when the worst case scenario has not crystallized, you will not use that as the actual numbers. We do stress tests for banks and uh, say that in the event that oil prices go down from now maybe $80 a barrel to $20 a barrel, what proportion of Nigerian banks are exposed to the oil sector, maybe you say total credit exposure of the banking industry is about 30% 30, uh, 30 of that credit is to the, is to the oil and gas sector. So if oil price goes to $20 a barrel, seven banks will fail because their capital adequacy ratios and other NPLs will blow up to a certain number, capital will crash to so they will not be able to withstand that exposure. That's a stress test. Dollar is not at $20 uh, a barrel today. So you can't say as at today, seven banks will fail. But as at next month, if dollar goes to this, even if oil, uh, oil prices crash to this, because of this proportion of a particular bank exposure to this sector, the borrowers in that uh, sector will not be able to pay because the, the, their inflows will not meet that. So this is what happened to the bank. But this has not crystallized. So it is important you do the stress test. It gives you uh, ability to build resilience and build buffers in, ca in, in case the shock crystallizes or signals of the shock crystallizes. But it is not to use that as absolute number to say that this is what is the situation. Mm. Dr. Mahmoud, as you're talking, I had to go to your website now, and I'm seeing as at the 21st of August, um, foreign exchange reserves, 33.77 billion, that's gross, liquid $33 billion. So are you saying that we should discard, of course, what JP Morgan is saying? So if for someone like me, or just like you said earlier, for those that know, yeah. but we also have to know when we see the books and when we see those figures. Okay. So should we take this or should we take that of J.P. Morgan? Should we totally discard that? Because that has actually raised the question also of transparency of the Apex Bank. You also mentioned earlier, and I want you to add that, mentioned earlier 
the financial statements, a lot of people, Nigerians, are really livid with you and your colleagues <laughs> at this time in terms of why are we getting seven years financial statements now? Now, in terms of, you see, I've seen some videos, even though there are political issues and, and stuff like that, where you see leaders, uh, influential people saying that Africa must tell their story. We must, we must fly our flag. We don't expect others to fly our flag for us. If the Central Bank of Nigeria publishes something on its website, uh, we do MPCs, we make uh, statements and stuff like that, and a private firm is giving you a number, and you feel more comfortable accepting the private firm's number as more credible than your own indigenous institutions, we, we're not saying that don't compare numbers. We're not saying that, but if, if we're so gullible, to get to that level that, okay, no, the president of Nigeria said this, but one journalist on BBC said this. So I believe the BBC journalist than my own president. It's ridiculous. So it gets to a level that we know we have to tell our own stories. The, yourself, you have access to Central Bank, you have access to all our directors. You can come to the bank. Come, I got these numbers. What is this? What is this? It will be more credible, me hearing it from you, from other channels, domestic firms, that yes, this number can work, this is what we'll find out. It's even more credible than me telling you, because that one is your own you know, assessment. There's freedom of information uh, that okay. you can come to the bank and get those information. So I think it is also ridiculing for us to now start coming to the public domain, the central bank governor or deputy governors coming to be hacking on issues by that by J.P. Morgan, I don't even know who said it in J.P. Morgan, I don't know the status of the person that, that said that, that in J.P. Morgan, uh, J.P. Morgan is also some of the uh, investor, invest, investment bank that mm -hmm. manages some of our reserves. So y y I don't want us to you know, get to that level that we will now be ridiculing our own self as a sovereign, as a country, because a private investor that has its own motive for giving those numbers it could also be that the numbers also were also quoted out of context. I don't want to mm. go into those, uh, uh, into those debates. Like, like I gave you an example that if you mark the market today, all our liabilities will be this. That's true. But you, are those, my, are those uh, liabilities or obligations due today, as at the time you are marking them to market? It's a different ballgame. So it depends on the context uh, on, on which you, mm. you, you look at that. Secondly, you see, the of all the monetary policy decisions that we take, more than 60% of them are due to responses to external shocks or external developments. Oil price, uh, normalization in the US, you know, all that, crisis, currency crisis, bank failure in advanced economies. And the solution to that, which I've also mentioned before you, is that we must consolidate domestically, we must become more, more competitive and efficient domestically, including our markets, uh, such that we'll, we'll, our resilience level will be a lot higher. And I gave example of Russia is in crisis, is in war with another country. But as we talk to you today, the macroeconomic parameters of Russia has not collapsed because the resilience level is extremely high. And uh, anything that happens to oil price today, by next month, Nigeria is already crying. But there are other alternatives to oil price. The crisis you are seeing in the FX market was because of the shortage or the dry up of supply of FX from oil export proceeds for, for a long period of time. Central bank does not print dollars. Central bank does not have any instrument that ends, apart from the income we earn from our reserves that we put in, in, in the ones that will be in dollars or other currencies. There's no way a central bank can get dollars. The dollars that we're using in that bank is the inflows that come to the state, the private sector or whatever, that are sold to the central bank. And that one central bank gives the Naira equivalent for domestic uh, uh, sector uses, then keep that to defend the Naira. So if we have been having maybe like 4 billion monthly, like we used to have 3 billion from NNPC, from other oil, exp oil export, from other export within the economy over the years, so we are talking about uh, a reserve of 60, 70 billion. Oh, worry about exchange rates. 
Even the foreign investors will be seeing those numbers. So it is within those kind of buckets. I want you know people, particularly the people we call public analysts, that will come and give numbers to 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 the public to analyze. Put things in context. The the central bank even taking a swap or doing some of these things is because of the paucity of the FX. If you have enough FX, you don't need to do swap with any, with any, you know, with any, with anybody. It was also because of our exposure to most of our importers importing from China and all that. That's why we do the renminbi naira swaps. And that is also one side in the sense that we export, we import more than we export. So if you don't build that, this domestic, uh, sectors and, and strengthen your domestic economy in terms of ex if you depreciate your naira is to drive export so if you don't have the exports to drive then your depreciation of naira will just go to your inflation so that's what we're seeing now yes that's what we're seeing so you see the the because there's a pass through you know that you get from the, the from those development so while we are saying yes structural factors are also contributing to inflation there are al also other monetary factors that are also playing a role. So the, 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 the emphasis I'm just trying to put in place here is that we need to always look inwards. You remember also, if you talk of JP Morgan, IMF also came up and said that um, um, the Naira, yes, is the which we, we unification of the exchange rate is very good, let it flow. But, and the question I ask personally is, let the Naira float for who? for your foreign investors to come and trade in the currencies, to give short-term loans of less than one year that cannot develop your economy, or to come and deepen the market so that those that want to buy and sell in the market can you know, have funds to, 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 to play with in that market and play with asset prices, or you want to bring in inflows that will develop your economy in the long run. So if you don't have those uh, objectives, rather than looking at your own domestic, who is suffering the high inflation now? Is it foreign investors or Nigerian, no Nigerians? So if, if you are depreciating and it is passing through to these uh, numbers and the foreign investors are having higher margin, you know, because of their investors, they are coming in, what are those foreign investment financing? That's the question we should ask. Is it to deepen the financial market, to deepen the capital market, or to finance trade, to finance export, to finance capital infrastructure development? Those months are not for one year. Those funds are going to stay for 10, 7 years. You don't get them through uh, portfolio investors. Mm -hmm. You need FDI. So we need, uh, Nancy, to be looking inwards. We need to think our own way. We need to have a good mastery of our own economy and be able to take our own decisions in such a way that it benefits Nigerians first before it benefits the rest of the world. Okay, now... Talking about mastery of our own economy, there's a new finance minister now. Mm. And at the last um, MPC meeting, the acting governor, Mr. Shonobi, in the communique which I have here, also mentioned about you and your colleagues have always said this all the time. At every MPC, there must be coordination mm -hmm. and collaboration between monetary policy and fiscal policy. Um, what do you think now about where coordination should go? Uh, because for you, you are the secretary of even the MPC, and I'm sure you are the one that uh, perhaps the um, DG Deputy Governor of uh, Monetary Policy, Dr. Obiora, works on this every uh, time you have your MPC. What is coordination? What does coordination mean for the monetary policy? Now we have a finance minister. Yeah. What will that coordination mean? And let me also join when President Tinubu did talk about oh, monetary policy needs thorough house cleaning. Uh, after that, July MPC meeting, we raised interest rates to 18.75%. Mm -hmm. So in the context of all of this, answer these questions. Coordination and thorough, how, uh, thorough cleaning of monetary policy. Yeah, I'll start with the fact that, one, we have one Nigeria, and all government agencies are working towards the goal of the Nigerian project, like some people call it. The president has his agenda, so also does his party have an agenda. The president has also made promises. These are the things I want to do. It's now left for the technocrats, the ministers, the governors of central bank, the heads of forest sectors, to go and sit down and work towards the achievement of those objectives. Because the, the president or the party 
made those promises because they saw the problems, the challenges of the economy. And people voted I them in because they think these guys will come and solve these problems. So all of us are supposed to work towards achieving that, not diversionary. We don't work in silos. The coordination with central bank should not just be reactionary to fiscal behavior. Central bank or monetary authorities and fiscal authorities should be able to sit together and let's plan. Do you think but that's what you've been doing? You've been reactionary? Perhaps because you had a seemingly you know, lackadaisical attitude from fiscal policies in the past administration? I don't want to put you on the spot, but yeah. of course, the, the <laughs> they are there for clearly for the everyone to see. The, the point is that... That's why I'm asking the question, what kind of coordination exactly? The I'll give you a, yes. a very good example. example. When there's a shock to the economy, like when we have the COVID, mm -hmm. government will have to spend substantially, yeah, to drive growth, to inject, employment, yeah, health, and whatever. Mm -hmm. Those excess injection into the economy, which is beyond the absorptive capacity of the production process of the economy, will mean that those funds, if they are not backed by commensurate output, such as supply and production, will become inflationary. So what central bank does is, it's like when they do uh, FAC, as the monies are going in, central bank mops from the banking system so that they don't become inflationary. What we are saying is that we do MTEP, Medium, medium term, term expenditure framework. Yes, we need them to central bank, monetary authorities, other uh, agencies sit down with the fiscal. We plan that, okay, the, the, the single digit inflation rate target you have is from the federal government, it's not central bank. So I want to have this single digit inflation. Now, central bank, what we are doing monetary uh, targeting, monetary policy framework. What volume of monetary base will you require to achieve this? What volume of credit growth will you require? So you agree, just like they do the national budget. So you agree on those terms and work towards that. If the federal government is going to be spending excessively, we will make sure that those spendings are targeted at sectors that will immediately boost production. And such productions will now you know, boost the supply side of the equation, and you don't see what we call demand pool inflation. So the point is that, there needs to be coordinated planning. You have the national economic, uh, this one you have governors and all. Yes, yes. Council. council. Yeah, Check so council. In, those, in those kind of places, the, the central the monetary authority should be able to say, now the fiscal authority or the government or the executive have these plans. These are the implications. Okay, if these are the implications and we want to achieve this, what are the ways that we can mm -hmm. amel ameliorate these challenges to be able to smoothly engage this? We have, we have injected so much money into the economy through those stimulus packages. But this is bringing huge inflation to us now. So it's wiping out those gains. The welfare gain that you get, or the income gain, the disposable income is, is, is narrowing because inflation number, which is the denominator, mm. is, is pulling down those real disposable uh, income. Mm. So the coordination is there must be synergies in our policy and approaches. There must be a lot of consult consultation and collaboration towards an ultimate goal that should be common to all of us and understood. And there must also be compromises. So if you said, okay, we want to do this, these are the, the, the expected what we call opportunity costs that will go with it. Mm. How do you manage it? And that's what we call economic stabilizers, just like they are doing subsidy now and they are now given uh, palliative or stabilizers to cushion those spread. So those things must be done harmoniously among uh, government players so that you have, you know, everybody knows where we're going okay. in, in, in the game. Okay, so Not in silos. Uh, and ev You do this. If you do this, I'm going to do this to counter the effect of this. But we are looking at the generality of the people, the economy, the populace. That is what should be our target. Okay, so if you have, within the context of what you've said now, that mm. of course, because of the pandemic and the economic challenges we've had mm. in the past eight years, we entered a recession two times in eight years mm -hmm. during President Buhari's uh, time. Uh, we needed um, cash or funds uh, stimulation. So if you're saying because of that, we're also seeing inflation, how would you now explain uh, to me that what we have seen that has cost inflation and now interest rate is at 18.75 percent and there are still hopes that you will continue to increase because you all are still hawks now you are not doves mm -hmm. yet if 
you are still targeting that you will continue to raise interest rates, yet inflation is still rising 24% for July from a, from NBS. Yes. We, yes, we don't know what August really. will be. <laughs> you have a next NPC meeting in mm. next month. Yes. So how would you now just oppose that? Because <laughs> print, printed monies, ways and means, perhaps 27 trillion naira, rising interest rates, inflation is still high. It is not working. Um, now. So would uh, it is it's seeming that perhaps the central bank has lost its control of price stability and even effects on one point which you stated earlier, uh, which you alluded to earlier. It's very important the way you, you put the picture. That means there are various targets. There should be multiple objectives. Multiple objectives will be com conflicting. And when they are conflicting, there are going to be um, trade-offs. Now, what is important is how do you maximize the benefits of the trade-offs? And, mm -hmm. and, and the, the Britain Woods institutions will tell you that monetary policy objectives should be singular. If you don't have multiple monetary policy objectives, you should have, this is price stability, that should be your only function, price stability. But in a developing or emerging or market frontier economy, those kind of um, theoretical postulations will have some limitations in the sense that, and like I said, ordinarily central bank should look at inflation, leave exchange rate, leave interest rates, let them play their way, just face what you are supposed to, to face. But when you have uh, instances of market failure, market failure means the, the market efficiency, the price discovery mechanism is a bit weak, so you don't get you know, speculations, arbitrage are still very, uh, market institutions are still very weak. You have market failure, you have institutions of state failure, some issues around securities and all that. So if you have those anomalies within your system, you need to provide measures within your ultimate objectives to address those challenges. And, and, and that will also mean why sometimes you see central bank going quasi-fiscal. Yes, you have price stability as your mandate, but you see that supply side uh, factors are playing a major role. We are not supposed to be supply side factors. Supply side factors are structural factors that are supposed to be done by the state or the private investors within the state. But if that sector is not catching up enough with the frequency of increases in inflation, inflation numbers are measured month on month. If you, GDP numbers are quarterly or annually, even if you invest in agriculture, it takes some months before you see the outcome. Manufacturing, the same thing, even years. So you should be able to find stabilizers within the economy to drive those uh, supply rigidities, to be able to boost production and bring down particularly food, food prices. Now, the, 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 the complexity of this is what is causing largely the confusions we have. You, you've also had in some of your programs, I've seen, oh, you are driving down inflation, while you are trying to break down inflation while your GDP is already going down, unemployment is rising and all that. So Stagflation. Yes, yeah, so you have multiple uh, factors playing simultaneously. And you need to have, and that's why I said you need to understand your domestic economy very well and deal with it and come to a level where you can compete favorably, competitively, mm. uh, globally, before you start diving into that space or start listening to the dictates of that place. Countries are now, they are saying there's deglobalization. You saw the meeting of BRICS, what they are coming up with. You see within our own sub-regions, even within the U.S., you know, there are protectionism and all that coming in. It's because everybody is ex exposed to global shocks okay. and want to conceal, I mean, or protect their, their, their economies and, and improve their resilience to those shocks. Okay, I think Dr. Mahmoud will leave mm. it at that. I'm, I'm really shocked as at time is fast spent when I'm still beginning to to get into the mood yes. of the interview. But we'll continue on another day. Thank you for coming today. All right, I've been speaking with Dr. Hassan Mahmoud, who is the Director of Monetary Policy Department at the Central Bank of Nigeria. You've heard it from him. We've raised issues about the FX, FX rate. We've raised issues about FX reserves as well as inflation. We'll continue another time. Please join me again tomorrow, same time on the station. I am Nancy Najibi, the best you can be. And do the change as you want to see by now.